In this video, I want to show you how to replace your alternator. It's located right under here, under the air intake and the upper radiator hose. Pretty easy job, let's get started. To disconnect the battery, use an eight millimeter wrench and remove the negative terminal. Someone left some extra pieces here, but I'm gonna fix that in a little bit, and as well as the corrosion. But either way, take the terminal off, set it aside to where it can't make connection with the negative battery terminal. Let's get this air intake out of here, lift up on this. Underneath, you'll see the wire, follow it, and unplug the mass airflow sensor. There we go. And I'm trying to remove this whole unit, so I'm just gonna unbolt the clamp on the throttle body and take this out as one whole assembly. There is another connector over here, unplug that. And to actually get to the throttle body, I need to remove this cover, three eight millimeter bolts. Remove these two hoses. And then unscrew this clamp with an eight millimeter socket. Now you can wiggle this whole assembly, pull it right off the throttle body, pick it up and set it aside. Now with the intake out of here, we can see all the connections for the starter. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this main uh, terminal here, 10 millimeter nut, remove the main power wire, pull it off, set it aside safely. Now over here, there's this connector here and then another one for which we'll need a pocket screwdriver. There we go. This is basically what I'm doing. I'm sticking my screwdriver here, trying to lift up the end here so I can disconnect it. Set this wire aside. Next, I want to pull the belt off so I can get the pulley on the alternator freed up. So I'm going to take my half inch breaker bar, put it into the serpentine belt tensioner here. Then we're going to take tension off the belt. Pull tension off the belt, remove the belt off the alternator and then release your tool. You don't have to take the belt all the way off, just take it off of the alternator. Underneath the alternator right here, there are two 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna have to break these free and get them out of here. There's one. Take the other bolt out and then right at the top here, you have this 10 millimeter bolt. You can remove both of these and then leave this one attached. That means the bracket will stay on the alternator. Uh, but in this case, I prefer to take this one off because when I take this one off, it won't make the bracket come out with the alternator, which means it'll be a little bit easier to remove it. Okay, get this bolt out. We can remove our alternator. Pull the radiator hose out of the way. There it is. Now, I don't actually have a new alternator, so I'll be putting in the original, but this will show you the procedure. And if you had a new alternator, you'd go ahead and slide it back in the same way it came out. Try to be careful not to damage other wires and hoses. Slide it down into place, and I'm gonna try to line it up at the bottom just like this. I'm gonna thread in this top bolt here, but I'm not gonna tighten it. I just wanna thread it in so it stays in place. There you go. It's going in easily. It's not cross-threading. It's perfect. I'm just gonna get it a little bit closer, but I'm gonna leave it right here where it still has wiggle room, and then I'll situate the two bottom bolts, tighten those first, and then I'll come back and tighten this top one. That one bottomed out by hand. That's great. Let's get these two snugged up, and then we'll go back up top, tighten the top one. I'm lifting up on the alternator so I can make sure that the top bolt is seated and stays seated. And I'm gonna snug these up. As you can see, I'm only using a quarter inch ratchet. You don't need to go crazy tight on these. Just make them nice and snug. 
Since we're here, might as well put the belt on. Make sure it's seated on all the other pulleys, which it looks like it is, so that is perfect. Take tension off the tensioner, slip the belt on, let go of your tool, double check the pulleys again, they all look perfect. Remember, if it's off, it will literally just shred itself as soon as you start it, so make sure that it's good. Take the breaker bar out of here, let's bolt up the top bolt, tighten this one up. Nice and snug. Reconnect the electrical connectors. There's the main, main wire here, and then the small one. Make sure they all click. And the main power wire, its boot is pulled back obviously. If yours has corrosion on it or rust, go ahead and clean it up with some sandpaper or a wire brush, whatever it takes. But just make sure it's clean so it can make good contact, otherwise you'll have charging issues. So having said that, go ahead and put this nut back on. On a new alternator, it might be a different size, uh, but for me it's still 10 millimeter. Make it nice and snug, but don't give it too much because you don't want to break this stud internally. And don't forget to put the boot back on to protect it from any water or debris that might come in contact with it. And lastly, the air filter housing with the rest of the intake here. Slide that over the throttle body, just like this. You had two hoses that went in here. Tighten up this clamp. Make sure this is pushed on all the way when you tighten the clamp. Nice and snug. These hoses are in. There's a wire here. Reconnect the sensor here. And on this side, you have the mass airflow sensor. Reconnect that. Make sure it clicks. Secure the harness and secure the air filter housing. Now to reinstall the battery, make sure it's positioned all the way down on the battery post. It's important so it can make a good connection. And then use your eight millimeter wrench or socket, whatever you prefer, and tighten it back up. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.